Hello, I'm Lizelle Sambri. I'm a traditionally published author and welcome back to the Save the Cat deep dive series. This is a video series I put together where I go through the story beats of the Save the Cat story structure and I share how I incorporate those beats into my own writing. So this series is very much a like this is the way that I do it. It does not have to be the way that you're doing it but I thought I'd put this together Together, um, because some people had said some of my previous videos about this had been helpful for them and so that's the whole point of this so I don't want you to watch this and take this as like these are the things you must do <laughs> for one because I'm not an authority on save the cat and two because you never have to do anything in writing it's your own art process but that is what this whole series is about I will have linked in the description there's a playlist where you can watch all the videos I've made thus far I've been going through the beats <laughs> mostly in order. Um, the fun and games video was the first one I made so now I'm going through the rest of the beats and this video is about the debate. So we're going to be talking about the debate section which is the last section of the first act. So we have finally gotten to the end of the first act. To start us off I'm going to read how Jessica Brody in Save the Cat Writes a Novel defines the debate section. So she says the debate is a time in your story for your hero to take a step back and decide how they're going to proceed after this life-altering life catalyst has knocked them down. Now I should note, the debate doesn't always have to be a decision. Sometimes it's not a matter of whether or not your hero will go or stay, act or not act. Sometimes that part is obvious. So what does your hero do in these situations? They prepare for the big journey. They gather supplies, they train, they prep mentally, physically, and emotionally. The question in this type of debate is usually something like, I know I'm going, but am I ready? How does the debate follow from the catalyst? So the catalyst, which was in my last video, I'll link that down in the description. You should check that one out. So this big life altering moment, this is going to then propel your character into that debate section. I'm just clarifying that here because I think that little section from Save the Cat was saying that, but not super explicitly. Um, I think about when I work on this debate section, I think of the debate as a direct result of the catalyst. Um, I think of it as being something that wouldn't be happening had the catalyst not occurred. And so that's kind of how I think about the debate and what I'm creating from the debate. Um, this is also what is going to propel your character into the second act. So it's going to take them from their status quo world where they're living the, their life exactly how they've always lived it into the new world and the second act where they're going to be in a completely different sort of lifestyle. Again, not always literally going into a new world, but metaphorically, yes, going into a new world. Um, and so I also think of the debate as a sort of like setting the tone for how we're going to go into the second act. So I just wanted to talk about that a little bit because I do think it's important to think of the debate as a function of the catalyst, as a consequence, as a result of the catalyst, um, just to give yourself a little bit more forward direction, but also to relate it to the beat that came before. As in that quote I just read from Jessica Brody, you have two options when you are doing this debate section. You can have your character making a decision as a result of the catalyst, so they have to kind of decide what to do, and so they're having a debate in that way, or your character's decision in some ways is kind of already made for them, in which case they are prepping, they are readying themselves for going into this second act. And so those are the two options you have. But in the spirit of full transparency, I had no memory of that second option. When I was doing the research for this video, I was like, oh, you didn't have to do that. And so I hadn't actually known that was like a quote unquote option and it had never come up in my books where I couldn't make that be a decision. And so I was thinking about it and I was like, oh, well, I guess maybe in the future I could do this with my books. But as I ruminated on it more, I decided actually that I want to continue doing this section in creating a decision for my character. And so I'm going to talk more at a length about why I will be continuing to do that for me personally. Um, 
But to touch on it a little bit, part of the reason for that is typically when I've read a debate section that is that sort of preparation phase, I find it to be very boring for me. I tend to not enjoy it. Um, I tend to find it tedious. It tends to feel like filler on the way towards the second act. However, that is not to say that it is always like that. Um, and so I am also, what I'm also going to be doing is I'm going to be talking about ways to, if you decide to choose to go that route, how you can make that more dynamic and more interesting for the reader and for your characters. And so I want to be able to explore both those options because those are two options that are within Save the Cat. Um, whereas the decision option is something I do in my writing all the time versus this non-decision option being something I've examined more from a reader perspective, but I'm also giving you that writer perspective of ways that you can make this a lot more dynamic. So that is how we are going to go through the video from here, but I did feel like it was important to be transparent and say that I have never done the second option actually because I did not even know it existed before I started prepping for this. So that is how we're going to go from there. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about why I will continue to be doing my debate sections like this and how I structure that for those of you that may be wanting to do that section as your character making a decision. And then after that, I will go into talking about if the character is not going to make a decision, if this is going to be more of a preparatory phase, ways that you can make that more interesting for your reader. Now we're going to talk about why I choose to do decision based debates. So for me, the crux of why I'm going to be continuing to structure my debate sections in this way is that I think when you make the character make a decision, you create conflict in the story, you create stakes because they have to, you know, maybe make the right or the wrong decision and you create a natural consequence. So later on in the story, they can come to, you know, think about that decision they made. They can come to regret it. They can come to wish, well, maybe I should have done this or maybe I should have done that or maybe I shouldn't have done that at all. There's there's so many options for how you can go back to that in the story and that's why I like having these decision sections. So I wanted to talk about an example and I'm going to use this one example because I think it can go either way. You could have that sort of debate option, that decision be made for them and continue on and go towards the prepper preparation style debate, or you can have them make a decision and do that more decision style debate. So the example I've come up with this is, uh, it's going to be an epic space opera sort of story. And so the main character in this case, the situation is that they get enlisted into this epic space war. And so now they're the catalyst event is they have been enlisted into this and it has changed their entire status quo world because now they have to go to war in this intergalactic space war against aliens or other planets, who knows, <laughs> but they have to go on to this space war. So in this case, they could accept their fate and you have the preparatory phase. And I'm going to talk more about that example later on, or you can make your character make a decision, in which case you're going to have to first focus on the type of character that you have. So say that your character is a girl, she's very studious, she wants to work in the medical career, she has no interest in going off to war and being a grunt soldier, and the lie that she believes is that if you are smart, you are just better than other people. So. <laughs> you are better than other people and you deserve more. That is the lie that she believes and she is living her life in that way. And so when she gets enlisted, she can have this decision of do I accept that I've been enlisted in this and maybe try and rise through the ranks or just try and survive and then I can do my medical stuff later. Or because I think that being smart makes me better than other people, do I try and go into the system and change my results to unenlist myself because I, I'm just that smart. So that immediately creates a conflict, immediately creates stakes, and it propels the story forward because now she is going, you're, you have a built-in scene. You have a built-in scene where you're going to have to have her sneak in and like try and change her results and try and do something to avoid this fate and to cement herself in her story. 
status quo world. And I like it because it is your character actively fighting against what is they're fighting it against change. They want to stay in that status quo world. They don't want to be pushed into the new world. Very stubborn about it in the case of this character. But it also doesn't even need to be that dramatic. So say you had a boy and he his entire life has just kind of understood that he's probably just going to get sent off to war and die. And he hasn't really done anything with his life because he imagined that he'd never really get to live it fully. And the lie that he believes is there is no point in making any sort of memories if you're not going to live a full evolved life. Let's say this isn't the best structured lie, but something to that effect. And so when he gets enlisted, he can also have this decision of either I can accept my fate or maybe this girl that he's always kind of had a crush on, maybe because he knows he's going to die anyway, he like finally that for the first time in his life decides I'm going to do something with long term consequences, even though I'm pretty sure I'm going to die and I'm just going to like tell her how I feel. And so he can debate about should I do that or actually should I stick to my lie that says none of that matters because I'm just going to die anyway? Or do I push a little bit into like, well, maybe some things in life matter. And so what you're having in that case of that character is you're having a character that is taking if he decides to go ahead and tell this girl how he feels is taking those first steps into moving away from the lie he believes into moving away from that fatal flaw sort of world that he lives in into one that's a little bit different and so then you can have that sort of character dynamic that sort of character arc, gro arc growth forward in that he's doing that versus the other character I talked about the girl which is really she's moving not backwards but she's trying very hard not to move forwards and so in both of those cases sure you could have them accept the accept their fate and like pack up and do all of that preparation but for my stories I would make them go through that debate I would make them make that decision I would make them do that because it creates that conflict it creates forward momentum so now it's like oh my gosh is he gonna like say something to this girl or is he not gonna say something to her or is it oh my gosh is she gonna get caught when she's going to change these scores or not and I find that that just creates something that propels you into the second act and of course in both of these cases they're still gonna go to war that is inevitable they are both going to inevitably at the end of the debate be forced to go into war but in creating this situation in which you make them have a decision that transition from the debate into the second act is a little bit more action-packed it's got a little bit more conflict a little bit more character develop development and depth to it. And so that's why I like doing those those decision style debates because it naturally creates that in the story. And your decision style debate can take different forms too. It doesn't just have to be like, I accept what's happening to me or I do something different. It could be two kind of different sorts of things. Like if the character, for example, only has an hour before they have to ship out, maybe the decision he's making is, um, do I go tell this girl how I feel or do I go confront my parents about something that upset me that they did? So that's a debate where, you know, still inherently that fate is technically accept it it's just what am I gonna do with this time I have before I go and do that and so that can also be a different sort of debate that you can create it doesn't necessarily need to be that except the fate um, the way I just think about the the debate is just making your character make a decision about something that has to do with what the catalyst has wrought it's a direct result from what has happened in the catalyst and those are the sorts of kind of requirements or the things that I think about when I'm deciding what that decision is going to be. And now we're on to if you decide to do the character does not necessarily make a decision sort of preparatory phase style of debate. So if you are going to choose this, I really implore you to find a way to make it dynamic, to introduce conflict or stakes or character development, something that is going to carry your reader forward from there into the second act so it doesn't feel like filler. So using our same epic space example, um, so the character gets enlisted into war and accepts this is a thing 
something that is going to happen to them and so they are readying themselves for what this is going to be so for example something you could do you could have a random spaceship blow up and it kind of gives them a taste of what the war is going to be maybe it freaks them out maybe they have to think about it in a very real salient way that they might not have thought about getting enlisted before um, or maybe they have really stoic parents that have never really like cared about them a lot um, maybe that's their way of the parents distancing themselves from them in case they have to go to war and maybe they are confronting their parents or maybe they're hoping for a more emotional reaction now that they've actually been enlisted and maybe their parents don't react the way they want them to um, or maybe they do and that has a development that has uh, that has an effect on the character that the reader can see and that can be a little bit more engaging you can also give the character a goal so not necessarily like a decision based goal as we would do in the other one but just a different sort of goal like maybe there is something they have to do before they leave maybe they're they're the only one that works in their parents little space bakery and they need someone to look after the space bakery while they're gone so they go and they have to convince someone to do that for them um, and that's something that you can even come around to in the second act because because now they have a reason to need to stay alive and to come back home because they need this person to keep working and they need to be able to sell to send their money to them or something like that whatever they make from the war etc just creating something that can propel the reader forward that has them continuing to turn the pages and that feels meaningful to the story like a scene that doesn't feel like you could just take out that whole preparation phase and just have them go straight from I find out I'm enlisted to now I'm shipping off to the war and that whole section wouldn't even matter. Put something in there that's going to matter, that you can't just pull out and pretend that it never happened, that is really going to be meaningful to the character in some way. And that way you're getting the most of that bead. Because really, I think the difference between the choosing to not make the decision and make the decision is that I find personally, when I make the character make a decision, it's just easier to create that sort of conflict. It ends up getting built in to the action of thinking of a decision, whereas the preparation phase, I think, is a lot more open in terms of what you can put in there to bridge the debate to the beginning of Act 2. How do you decide what is a worthy debate for your character? So the way that I decide what how this debate section is going to form for my character is that I think about the character first. Um, so I have in the description, I have a video about uh, creating complex characters that I highly recommend checking out. And so in this case, I have that character arc planned out. I know the lie that the character believes. I know how I want their arc to progress from there. And so I really think about that when I'm deciding this debate, because your character is allowed to go kicking and screaming. So you can decide that they're going to fight against the changes that the catalyst is going to introduce into their life they can regress they can get worse and believe in the lie even even more they can get better they can start to like fight against the lie a little bit as a result of the catalyst coming into their lives um, but I want to think about their character arc and I want to think about where I want them to go and what sort of actions will propel them that way or will share something about the character. So, you know, a character that's fighting, kicking and screaming against the catalyst, you know, that's a more stubborn character. That's a character that's going to have a little bit of a diff more difficult arc getting to that point versus a character that might already be showing signs of like, well, maybe I don't believe in this lie necessarily, um, as we talked about in that example with the girl and boy character. So that's really what I like to think about. Um, and then from there, I brainstorm. So I make sort of a list of possible debates and how I might want to structure that. As in the case of my stories, I always choose a decision based ones, but it's up to you which one you're going to choose and just kind of brainstorming some ideas of what that can be. And the way that I kind of pick the quote unquote best one is I try and pick something that has longevity throughout the entire story. So I want to pick a debate that is going to, you know, the character is going to return to that in some way. It's going to kind of hang over their heads. It might even, you know, 
change the way that things happen later on in the book. As I was talking about in that example with the space bakery, um, I like choosing something that's going to you know when the reader gets further down the line in the book they're going to start thinking about that decision too and being like well maybe they should have made a different decision or this thing that happened during that earlier section in the book is now coming up later um i try and pick those ones just because i think those have a more dynamic quality for the story i think they add more layers to the story i think the more that you can have something exist outside of its little beat the more dynamic that makes the story because then it adds layers it's not like something is just existing in a silo it is part of the entire story and so that's the way that I kind of decide which debate is the more worthy debate that's it for the debate section of Save the Cat. I hope that you enjoyed this deep dive and that it was helpful to you in some way. As I say always, kind of take and leave. Take what works for you, leave what doesn't. It's totally your writing practice, so go about it in whichever way works best for you. I also have linked in the description um, the uh, books, the Save the Cat books, so Save the Cat by Blake Snyder and also Save the Cat Writes a Novel by Jessica Brody if you want to check out the original source material, which I highly recommend if you're going to be watching this series, just to give you an idea of these beats and like how the experts are telling you to use them. Um, because really what I'm doing is a layer on top and it's about my own personal process. So there is that. And then the next beat we're going to be tackling is Break Into Two. Um, these videos are going to be a bit more spread out now because I'm not doing videos as often as I used to just to accommodate my author writing schedule um but i will continue to put these out um i've gotten great feedback on this series and it seems to be helping a lot of you so i'm happy to continue on with it and keep making videos they're just going to be a little bit more spread out but that's it if you like this video please give it a thumbs up if you haven't subscribed already please subscribe and thank you so much for watching bye